The World Federation of the Deaf hosted a World Congress in South Africa called the Global Deaf Renaissance. It was really inspiring to see deaf people fly from all over to celebrate and share their experiences. It was truly an honor to be there. All deaf people experience a renaissance. Globally, not all of their experiences are the same. Only a small fraction have a positive experience, and I'll explain what I mean. While deaf people in Europe and the United States struggle with autism, they also have the protection of human rights. These rights are established to technically reduce problems and dependency. It's not a perfect system, but they do have human rights. These rights include access to education, employment, and the freedom to communicate using sign language. However, this is not the same for deaf people in developing countries, not at all. In the US, there are two predominant perspectives of deaf people. The first is a pathological view that sees deaf people as in need of fixing in order to be the same as hearing people. The second perspective is a sociocultural one that views deaf people as whole individuals with a unique identity, language, culture, and community. Again, these perspectives are not the same for people living in developing countries. They do not have the luxury of analyzing theory and comparing a medical versus a cultural view of their world. Instead, what deaf people in developing countries have is poverty, deprivation, and a lack of rights. For these deaf people, life is not good. Oftentimes, the way they are treated is in violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights established by the United Nations in protection of human rights. Many of them are not allowed to use sign language in their education environment and therefore have little to no access to information. They have no knowledge of global or local events and are constantly behind in current news. Many of them are unemployed and very poor. Some nations do not allow deaf people to drive, a few have made it illegal for a deaf person to marry another deaf person or raise children. And some countries do not allow deaf people to vote. The reason for their experience in these countries is that there are not enough resources. There is not enough training for teachers and interpreters. There is not medical care available and there are no training programs available. There are also no legal and social services for the deaf. Many deaf people are taken advantage of and they have found incidences of using deaf people as slaves in both Mexico and France. Another example of deaf people's experience in developing countries is the girls and women who are victims of rape and sex abuse. There's one true story about a girl who was murdered. When I asked how something like this could happen, I was told that she did not have access to language or education and earned money by selling her body for sex. What happened was that one of her clients got angry after finding out the price that she would charge and strangled her to death. Forty-seven million deaf people live in this vast world, but their experiences vary greatly. City life has many advantages. There are deaf schools, deaf organizations, community, language, and events. The city is definitely better. But many deaf people live in rural areas far from city life. They are born and raised in 100% isolation. The way they address this is by developing home signs with family and neighbors to establish connection. They have plenty to do by staying busy in a farm type environment. And there are many advantages to this way of living. However, the drawback is that the deaf person can become a slave. Millions and millions of deaf people live that type of life in complete isolation with no community and no language. When I asked some of them about their experience, they couldn't answer. Their cognitive development was extremely delayed.
They cannot express themselves. When these types of deaf children finally enter a deaf school, they are in a category called, quote, know nothings. Additionally, people that gesture and communicate without language or schooling are called chickens. This has become a serious issue due to a lack of support and a dependency on hearing organizations to provide help like churches, nonprofits, and international organizations. Dr. Wilson researched four programs from the U.S. in Jamaica to determine what organizations and programs should look like in order to empower deaf people. Her observations are as follows. Sign language is important. Deaf people must have it to survive. However, some deaf people take it too far. For example, missionaries from churches recruit people from the U.S. to go to other countries and teach ASL. This effectively causes ASL to take over and decimate the region's local sign language. This is called linguistic imperialism and is against the policy of the World Federation of the Deaf. Their policy states that the local region sign is very important and that utilizing sign language from other countries is less important. All organizations should be familiar with the policies of the World Federation for the Deaf and be aware of current activities and news. Deaf organizations in Europe and the US should never forget the people that are labeled know-nothings, but instead should look for ways to support deaf organizations in those countries. Those who are fortunate enough to travel and meet deaf people abroad should take advantage of the opportunity to learn their local sign language. It's a wonderful experience to learn and to see their way of life. In exchange, they can be offered skills, training, and resources. The challenge now is to disseminate the awareness and to offer a true reality check of what is happening with deaf people in developing countries today. What we need is for people to feel inspired to go to those countries and make a difference. That is a deaf renaissance and we have a long way to go, but deaf people deserve it. Oppression there and oppression here is the same thing. We work tirelessly to make a difference.